Elon Musk just revealed a stunning launch date, raising questions about its feasibility. In parallel, SpaceX expanded the scope of its Falcon 9 operations on a global scale, solidifying its lead in the commercial launch space. Flight Lab reached a major milestone, further strengthening its foothold in the industry. With these two pioneering space companies at the forefront of innovation, we are witnessing a watershed moment in the industry. Let's dive deeper in today's episode of NR Studio. Currently, the discussion around SpaceX is largely focused on Flight 8, which is the upcoming significant advancement in the Starship testing program. The key question concerns the possibility of a launch taking place this month. There is a significant increase in optimism, especially given the rapid progress in hardware readiness. However, potential delays may still arise due to the need for FAA regulatory approvals. The prevailing uncertainty has fueled the discourse. However, in a remarkable development, Musk has made a bold statement hinting at a possible acceleration of the launch schedule. In a recent dialogue with three specialists, Musk discussed a presentation slide that projected a launch date for Starship Flight 8 of February 2, 2025, which is the schedule originally mentioned in the FCC license. In a succinct yet compelling reply, Musk said, it could happen sooner. Did you hear that? Musk not only acknowledged the FCC's timeline, but also hinted that the Starship launch could happen ahead of schedule. If this statement proves accurate, we could be looking at a launch in a matter of days. Furthermore, if the event happens after February 2nd, there's still a good chance it could happen before the end of the month. This isn't the first time Musk has hinted at an upcoming launch. After Flight 7, he tweeted, At this time, there is no indication that the next launch will be delayed beyond next month. Was he joking? Or could SpaceX be gearing up for Flight 8 sooner than expected? If all goes well, a late February launch could be just around the corner. And here's why. From a hardware perspective, both the B-15 and S-3 have successfully completed their static fire tests, indicating that their respective testing phases are now complete. Both are currently undergoing final inspections and refinements to ensure reliability before the start of subsystem installation. Imagery captured at the Star Factory validates that the simulated satellite has indeed been moved indoors for processing. Meanwhile, B-15 re-entered the facility on February 10th then joined S3 on February 12th. Given that checks are likely to begin soon, it is reasonable to conclude that they are currently in the final phase of integration. With this schedule, both phases could be moved to the launch pad early for integrated testing. If those tests are completed without complications, the hardware can be considered fully ready for launch. The main hurdle at this point is obtaining FAA approval. SpaceX must complete its investigation into the Ship 33 failure, present its findings to the FAA, describe the necessary corrective actions, and certify compliance with all public safety regulations. Final approval for the flight can only be granted after this process is complete. While this may seem like a drawn-out process, there is strong evidence that the FAA is moving forward quickly. The investigation began shortly after Flight 7, indicating that more than a month has passed since then. Please provide the text you would like me to rewrite in a more sophisticated manner. SpaceX might have already fulfilled the majority of the necessary steps, even in the absence of an official declaration to that effect. Furthermore, no significant damage has been reported from Flight 7, potentially allowing for a swifter review process. An additional pivotal consideration is that SpaceX is not required to amend its launch license, given that the test profile remains consistent. This indicates that once the FAA grants approval, SpaceX may advance without the need for additional licensing modifications. Considering that the FAA has recently enhanced its processing efficiency, there exists a plausible opportunity for approval to occur earlier than anticipated. At this juncture, we must patiently await an official communique from Musk, SpaceX, or the FAA. However, considering the present evidence, there is ample justification to anticipate that flight the 8th of May indeed be launched by month's end. What are your thoughts? Do you believe SpaceX will succeed? Please indicate your response with a yes or no in the comments below, and feel free to share your predictions regarding the launch date. Should you find yourself enthusiastic about the future of Starship, we encourage you to like the video and subscribe to our channel for further updates on the remarkable odyssey of SpaceX. As we anticipate the arrival of Flight 8, SpaceX has once more expanded the horizons of space exploration by achieving another extraordinary milestone, this time featuring the Falcon 9.
On February 18th, at precisely 6.21 p.m. Eastern Time, SpaceX accomplished a successful launch of a Falcon 9 rocket, deploying 23 Starlink satellites into orbit. The operation was executed impeccably, with the payload deploying according to strategy, thereby augmenting the continuously expanding Starlink constellation. This launch signified SpaceX's 21st mission of the year, and an impressive total of 38 flights for the Falcon 9 to date. Nevertheless, what distinctly elevated this mission was the landing, a remarkable achievement that grows ever more impressive as SpaceX relentlessly advances the boundaries of rocket reusability. Although Falcon 9 booster landings have become customary, this specific landing was unprecedented. A mere eight minutes post-launch, Booster B-1086 executed a flawless landing on the Just Read the Instructions drone ship, achieving its 16th successful recovery, contributing to the 110th landing on this particular vessel, and commemorating a remarkable total of 10 booster landings in SpaceX's storied history. However, the true revelation lies in the fact that this landing occurred just offshore from the Bahamas, marking the inaugural instance of a Falcon 9 booster having launched from one nation and successfully landed in another. Prior to the flight, SpaceX alluded to this landmark occasion, declaring, Today's mission marks the inaugural landing of Falcon 9 on a drone ship situated off the coast of the Bahamas. The company subsequently underscored the importance of this event through a sequence of tweets, elucidating how the newly established landing site facilitates a more efficient southeast trajectory for Falcon 9 departing from Florida. This optimization enhances payload capacity and enables missions such as Crew Dragon's FRAM-2 to successfully achieve polar orbits. Furthermore, proximity to the Bahamas affords superior options for winter weather recovery, thereby augmenting the rapid turnaround capabilities of Falcon 9. Kiko Donchev, vice president of launch at SpaceX, emphasized the significance of the event, stating, This launch is exceptional as it marks the inaugural occasion where a rocket is launched from one nation and lands in another, bringing us one step closer to transforming spaceflight into a more aircraft-like experience. In the wake of the triumphant landing, Musk enthusiastically took to social media to commemorate the milestone, highlighting that it marks the inaugural occasion in which a rocket has launched from one nation, traversed into space, and returned to land in another. From the perspective of the Bahamian contingent, this occasion was of equal significance. Deputy Prime Minister Isaac Chester Cooper conveyed his excitement during the SpaceX livestream, remarking, this holds immense significance for the Bahamas on multiple fronts. The inaugural international landing in the Bahamas, located in the Exuma Sound, holds considerable importance on its own merit. It positions us at the forefront of innovation, offering our modest population of 00000 the chance to engage in the aerospace sector. This is monumental. This milestone not only signifies yet another successful launch, but also underscores the increasing internationalization of SpaceX rocket operations. Although SpaceX has consistently catered to an international clientele, its launches have traditionally been conducted within the confines of the United States, in territorial waters or in international maritime zones. By entering the jurisdiction of another nation, SpaceX has evidenced the robustness of its systems and highlighted their potential for international growth. As we look to the future, it appears that we may only be at the inception of a much larger narrative. Although the Bahamas may be the inaugural nation beyond the United States, to facilitate a Falcon 9 landing, it is anticipated that additional nations may soon emulate this initiative. The infrastructure of SpaceX may encompass more than just landing operations. It is plausible that, in the future, Falcon 9 launches will also occur from international locations. With Starship poised on the horizon, the prospect of significantly larger scale global operations may soon transform into a tangible reality. As SpaceX persistently shatters records and redefines the boundaries of possibility, one conclusion becomes evident. They are distinguishing themselves from their peers in the aerospace industry. This recent achievement serves as compelling evidence that their aspirations for the future of spaceflight extend beyond mere ambition. It is unfolding before our very eyes, here and now. The intriguing inquiry now arises. What remarkable accomplishment will they undertake next? In relation to remarkable feats, Rocket Lab has recently attained a significant milestone, further enhancing its impressive repertoire of successes. 
On February 18th at 6.17 p.m. Eastern Time, Rocket Labs successfully deployed an electron rocket which transported Black Sky's Gen 3 satellites into orbit. These high-resolution Earth imaging satellites were successfully deployed almost an hour post-launch, representing a significant advancement in the evolution of real-time geospatial intelligence. The mission, aptly titled Fasten Your Seatbelts, marked Rocket Lab's ninth launch for Black Sky since the inception of their collaboration in 2019. Notably, this flight represents Electron's 60th overall mission, a commendable milestone that further solidifies Rocket Lab's standing as a frontrunner in the realm of small satellite launches. This marked Rocket Lab's second mission of the year, positioning the company to exceed its 2023 benchmark of 16 total launches, which encompasses one orbital flights. If Rocket Lab maintains its current trajectory, it could potentially rival some of the more sluggish giants in the space, such as Blue Origin and ULA. However, the excitement doesn't stop there. Rocket Lab and SpaceX, arguably the most dynamic players in the space industry today, have pulled off an incredible feat with their latest launches. With launch times recorded at 6.17 p.m. for the Electron and 6.21 p.m. for the Falcon 9, the two missions came within four minutes of each other. This is an extremely rare feat in the industry, a testament to the rapid rise in global launch capabilities. It's made all the more remarkable by the involvement of two of the most dynamic and pioneering companies. This achievement contributed to a record-breaking number of launches in 2020, further cementing the U.S.'s dominance in the space industry. In the future, as organizations like SpaceX and Rocket Lab increase the frequency of launches, such occurrences are likely to become more frequent. That's it for today's episode. See you in the next episode.